Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our MUT web series. Today, I have two of our tech gurus from the Memorial Union with us, Casey Dagg and David Hannon, and they are here to share with us some resources for helping you make your events and meetings go virtual. Um, so I'm going to let them introduce themselves and talk about some resources that Iowa State has available to help you. So Casey and David, if you want to take it away and do some brief introductions and start chatting about Iowa State resources. Sure, I'll, uh, I'll jump in first. Um, as I just said, my name is Casey Dagg. I'm our technology manager here. So I oversee uh, our audio visual kind of team and then uh, help out with the tech uh, on the IT side too. But um, yeah, so one of the main platforms you've probably heard and seen, um, and we're actually utilizing it right now to record this virtually, uh, is Cisco WebEx. Um, Cisco WebEx is like a web conferencing software that um, allows you to host virtual um, video meetings with remote participants. So it's kind of been really key, especially for our team um, as we host meetings and uh, events. So um, there's several other web conferencing platforms that you've probably already used to like Zoom. Um, Microsoft Teams has a web um, meeting functionality as well. And there's also Google Meet, but all those are available to you if you're a member of the Iowa State community, but um, kind of the most common ones that we're using right now are WebEx and Zoom. And we can dig into a little more details on those later, but um, yeah, those are the two main ones that we're using. Um, just to get my introduction out of the way, I'm David Hannon. I'm the system support specialist for the MU. I mostly focus on the IT side of things relevant to software and hardware uh, and supporting the MU and all its different packages of software that we use. But also I am, I'm fairly experienced in the realm of live streaming and uh, doing online based events. I have a uh, pretty good knowledge on setting up events, planning them for a, a, a larger audiences and and things of that nature where you need to get a message out to a lot of people in a in a in a in a quality and not so questionable audio format you know it's uh, it's, it's kind of it, it's people's mics aren't working everything like that um, that can happen when you're using a tool you're not used to so uh if if anything for what i can bring for resources is knowledge and and, and expertise and just a a good eye for or critiquing what what you can bring uh uh, for virtualizing events or just something that you just want to show off online. Um, the thing that people use for live streaming, of course, YouTube, Facebook, uh, twitch.tv is a very popular one. And all those things can be utilized uh, to, to bring events and bring people together online. But those are for more public facing things and not for something like a web conference where you want to have it more closed invite. That'd be something like, it, like Casey said with Zoom or WebEx. So if you have any questions regarding true live streaming and, and online events, uh, definitely get in contact with both of us. Um, but we also have hardware, uh, software, and just general knowledge that we can provide to you uh, to get your event on the way. So there's my intro. Awesome. Thank you both. Um, so now that we talked a little bit about the Iowa State resources available, can you tell us a little bit more about MU resources that might be available to help support students or departments or whoever is using our spaces during this time. And Casey, you're in the building, so maybe if you can give us a look at that room, that'd be great. Yeah, so one of the things that we've done um, that we're utilizing to support some of our internal programs that we're doing here, and you'll actually see kind of maybe a debut a little bit of this this evening with our, um, as part of this MUTU uh, series, we're gonna be doing some virtual trivia. So um, I've kind of set up a little bit of a recording studio here. So inside uh, of one of our small meeting rooms, I have a laptop and I've got a computer set up. I've got cameras. We even have a green screen. I can actually kind of pan around to kind of show you what I've set up here. So you can see I have a, a remote pan to uh, tilt zoomable camera here. Uh, I've got my computer. Uh, I've got an audio interface with a microphone. And then if you look over here, we have a green screen that can do all kinds of fun effects and stuff like that. So um, we definitely have this available um, for use. It's, we probably would need to like coordinate a way to make sure that we're doing it in a safe manner with social distancing and all of that. But it's certainly something that we can um, utilize and have available for um, organizations or departments that may need assistance with 
um, recording or live streaming or any of those sort of services. Um, we can do all those here in house still in the union. So, yeah. Great. Um, David, anything to add on to that about any resources or support within the building? Well, I, th I think what we, we first want to provide, like I said earlier, is, is the knowledge. Um, it's very easy to just go online and say, how do I start live streaming or how do I start streaming? And you can, you, most people can go online, get the right resources and, and be prepared. But th that might be good for a personal use, but that's probably not best for something that you're doing publicly uh, or you want, you want to have the level of quality. And that's what we're, we're really here for. We have the equipment that's all nice, but you may not know how to use it or you may not know what you, how you want it to look. Uh, you may think that you might not have the proper quality settings for the stream. There's all, a whole bunch of different factors involved that a 15 minute video like this is not going to be able to provide to you. So what the real resource we have is the, the consultation. Um, so what I would like to provide and, and that Casey agrees with me is we want to be able to have you contact us, whether it either be through a support ticket through our ticketing system through ME support or just a direct email to either me or Casey um, just saying, hey, I want to do something online. How can I do it? And we will provide you the tools to get you there, whether it's just this is what you do. Follow this tutorial. Hey, show us a little bit of what you've started. Maybe we can critique that, tweak that a little bit. But again, the, the personal hands hands on whether we can't actually be together we can at least take you from point a to point b whatever that may look like so again the, the consultation is what we really want to provide to you all because again you can learn it through a youtube video tutorial and that's fine but it, it's it's not that that hands-on approach that we really want to help you out with so yeah, I'll jump great. in a little bit more here too. Um, one of the things you might realize is that you have some equipment, like if you have a web camera, all that kind of stuff, you may be able to produce some of the things that um, I kind of talked about doing here in our studio. You might be able to do that at home too with um, some different software and platforms too. So that's where David and I's expertise can come in handy with just like letting you know whether it's something you, that you would need to come into the building to do or if it's something you might be able to just do from your own home too. So there's a lot that you can do. Yeah, and I, I think that's a, that's a good point that we have both of these, these screens set up here. We have Casey with this nice green screen set up, this nice camera that could move and everything. And I'll, I'll tell you right now, at home, I am using a personal camera of mine. You can also use a webcam. I'm just using an audio headset and I have my computer. Um, generally speaking, the only thing you really need for a quality live stream is a decent internet connection, a computer that can handle the, the stream and your content what do you want to show to people around the world um the quality of that content can vary based off of how pricey or the quality of the equipment you have but at the end of the day if you just want to get a message out there you want to have a nice event uh, there's always possibilities with even just very relatively cheap hardware so uh don't think that you need to have a, a massive recording studio to to do what you want to do again come talk to us we'll, we'll figure a solution out for you so yeah, that is great. And kind of tapping into your expertise and knowledge a little bit more. Can you talk about any tips or tricks that you might have for live streaming or for webcasts, or maybe it's just virtual meetings with your team? What are, your, what are some of your suggestions for people? I, I, I would personally heavily, heavily recommend uh, learning the quality of the devices you're using. Um, if, if that means doing a Zoom call with someone and just recording and seeing what you sound like to other people, some people might not speak up and say, hey, your, your mic's a little quiet or hey, the, your video quality is not so great. Um, th that can be the difference between a, a meeting that gets a message across okay and a meeting that doesn't get a message across at all because the, the information's all, you know, as the quality's all, all over the place. So definitely being able to take some time and knowing where you are, you are at quality wise, maybe even taking a recording, practicing, trying different settings. Uh, but, but yeah, definitely practice. Um, other live streaming tips, um, I, I would definitely say learn what platform fits you best. Um, do you like WebEx? Do you like Zoom? Uh, do you want to stream to Facebook? If you want to stream to Facebook, well, what does that look like? Um, maybe actually go ahead and watch a Facebook live stream to see what kind of, what that content really looks like on the page and how, you, how to get people to that, like just sharing the link. Is it just sharing the link or do you want to have it private? All those factors can, can, can build up. Uh, so 
learning is really important. Um, outside of that is, uh, I think th probably the biggest thing is, is learning to, uh, learning to talk to a camera. It's actually quite difficult. I don't even look at my camera. This is my camera over here. I'm looking at the screen. Here's Ashley on the screen. Uh, so learning to, to stare at someone, you know, that might not be there because it's just a camera. So it's quite hard to keep eye contact with a camera. I'll tell you what, um, but th those are some of my, my top tips. So. I think another thing that when you're doing a live stream is just really making sure you plan ahead and you basically go through the same uh, steps that you would in planning any other event. Um, you need to coordinate who your audience is going to be. You need to um, figure out the platforms that you want. You need to figure out your messaging. Um, you need to figure out all of the content, like David said, whether it's you speaking live or a combination of you speaking live and pre-recorded content and, and just really think through everything thoroughly before you just go ahead and hit that go live button because it's uh, once you go live, you're live. You can't go back and redo it. You can't um, you know, undo it. So whatever you say uh, live is, is actually happening. So you gotta, you gotta plan it out carefully and make sure that you. Yeah, so with all of the coronavirus impacts, I think that a lot of the people in the events and hospitality industry and in every industry in fact, have been kind of forced into using more of these virtual resources. Um, and I think we're gonna see a big shift in events when we start coming back in the fall. Can you tell us a little bit about um, how you see some of these events using virtual resources in the future or kind of how they're going to go hybrid or what do you see happening as events come back this fall or maybe later this summer? Well, I'm gonna jump in a little bit and say that like already we started to see a little bit of a trend towards live stream and towards like accessibility of these resources from a number of perspectives. So Gen Z people, first of all, already are kind of wired to like have this tendency to maybe attend a meeting or an event virtually versus physically being there. And that stems from, uh, in Gen Z, there's especially this concept of uh, FOMO or fear of missing out. And so um, one of the things that we've been starting to try to do is to create these live streams of events and stuff like that. And so um, this has really just kind of accelerated that process and forced it. So I think you're gonna see um, likely, I mean, we don't really know what the health restrictions are going to be, but I think there's still going to be fear and there's still going to be um, caution in terms of large gatherings and stuff like that. So as as that we continue to um, start to host more events and things like that, there's still going to be kind of a hybrid model, I think, and um, we'll be completely ready here in the union for uh, to be able to do that with the, with the various tech that we have here. So. Um, to to kind of to piggyback off what Casey said, I think there's also there, there's a level of conjecture, but that, that I can provide. But I think the I think there will be a level of expectation that most events will have some level of online component, whether it's a either just a post recording of the event or whatever. It might not be live. It might just be after the fact. But um, we we really don't know what it's going to look like after all this ends. We, we don't know what the expectation will be. We don't know what higher level administrative people will expect from their, their, their events. Are they going to say, well, you know, we, we want to have this hosted, but we must have an online component. Uh, and that could even change even into the academic realm. So it's, it's definitely keeping ear to the ground and, and saying, okay, well, this is, this is where the expectations are leaning towards. And so having the agility to say, well, we can do both doesn't matter. We don't even need to have seats in the audience. You can just be on the stage. As long as you, you have, we can provide those resources. I, I think that's important, but yeah, it, it is, it is interesting where we're Casey talking about the younger generations and the generations that we're building up here at Iowa state, they already have the expectation that something will be online. So in, in a lot of cases, they might be remiss if there, there isn't an online component. So, so are we, are we meeting that expectation, you know, here at the MU and again at, at Iowa State as a whole? So that question needs to kind of constantly reevaluated all the time. So, yeah, I think that's great, and I definitely think that we are going to see a big shift towards more virtual and hybrid events coming up later this fall and into the future with events in the hospitality industry. So. Um, thank you for joining us today, Casey and David. It has been great to hear some of your tips and tricks and see some of the resources that we have available at the MU. And like they said, we'll be ready to take events um, and make them into a virtual format or 
live stream them, do webcasts, whatever you want to do with the union. So we're excited to have events come back, hopefully sooner rather than later. But thanks for joining us today, and we'll look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.